presence of the England trio, Bobby Moore, Jeff Hurst and Martin Peters. Young Brooking made his league debut at the age of 18, but failed to establish a regular place for four seasons. And at one time, he was even on the transfer list. Play by Payne, but he gives it away. Brooking. Three. I think it's easier for a young player to come in and feel relaxed. I mean, I must admit, as a young player. Two FA Cup winners' medals and a memorable final in 1980. The fact that we were the underdogs, Arsenal, everyone expected them to win and, of course, scoring the winning goal, it's sort of any player's dream, A, to play, and then secondly, to, to score in a cup final. And, and then, of course, before you say it, I mean, the fact that it was with my head <laughs> makes it even more of a shock. Driven in, and is it a goal? It is! Trevor Brooking! That was the highlight of Brooking's accomplished club career with West Ham. But on the international front, he won 47 England caps, serving four different managers, including his old club boss, Ron Greenwood. His elegant midfield skills created many a vital opening. I think it's fair to say probably that my best games were under Ron. Could they have played the whole of that match? You think perhaps you might have risked playing one of us out and blocked one of my shots. To Brooking in a bit of space. Asked to nominate the fellow professionals he's admired most, Brooking Morgan. Best a great goal! From the end that he was the one that seemed available. Brooking breaking forward. Took the attention away from Keegan. There's the one, two. And it's 3 1. It was. West Ham as a schoolboy in 1964 and played 519 games. He won 47 England caps and had a reputation as one of the most skillful and respected men in the sport. And really, it's a sad week for the game because Brooking retires at the same time as two other really great soccer figures. Referee Clive Thomas will be presiding over his last game, no doubt in the flamboyant manner that's made him universally recognised, if not universally loved. Kevin Keegan's retirement will leave an impossible gap to fill at Newcastle, but his goals have brought First Division football back to St James's Park. Chance here for Keegan. He's done it. Kevin Keegan scores, and St James's Park goes absolutely wild. 15 minutes gone, and Kevin Keegan celebrates his debut with the goal. The whole of time side has been prayed for. Keegan will certainly be missed, but it's certain that Upton Park just won't be the same without the great Trevor Brooking. All the way, Brooking! Straight with Finley, hit the post, got it in! Brooking! What an amazing goal! Terrific player. Uh, not only a good player, a terrific bloke. Um, I knew him, well, I played football with him back in when I was at school, with the same age group. Uh, saw him, I think, for the last time now, Monday at Highbury, and he's still got the touches. Well, my daughter thinks he's marvellous, and he's, he's just got personality and he's got a go. <laughs> oh, he's friendly, like, and you never see him booked on the field or nothing, do you? He was absolutely great. Everything I Without him, West Ham are never going to win another match. I've met him before, and he seems really kind and easy to talk to. <laughs> I like him. Do you think the club will miss him? Yeah, we will. Yeah. I wish he could stay. Do you ever try and wind him up? No, I think that now and again, it, when we've been in the gym, uh, it gets a little bit hectic at times and probably tempt us to flare a little bit, but uh, we've never managed it yet. We have actually heard him say damn once, but that's about as far as it's ever gone.
I don't want to make him feel old, but he used to be one of my heroes <laughs> when I was a young lad, so... Uh, I know him through England and everything, and he's a great fella. A gentleman both on and off the pitch. And people pay money to watch him play, which, I mean, that's the greatest compliment you can have, I think. He is no trouble to deal with. I've never had a problem with him. All he ever seems to do is to smile, and he's the butt of many, many jokes at the club. And uh, I wouldn't imagine there's many international players who've taken what we call a stick off the other lads and yet come through so well and so dearly thought of. He almost, though, John, seems too good to be true. Well, I suppose if you looked at all the compliments he'd had over his career and put them all together, you'd think people were telling lies. I can assure you they're not. You first walked into this training ground about 20 years ago, but walking in this week and over the last few weeks, have you felt a tinge of sadness? Uh, well, naturally, it'll be a wrench. I think it will be harder if you, know, you were just going to cut yourself off completely. I mean, um, during the year, I always get a lot of autographed footballs from the lads, and I mean, there's, there's no way that the lads are going to escape from that, so I shall be calling in sort of regular intervals getting those done, and I hope to go to all the games, you know, so I still will have that close association. I mean, I used to support West Ham when I was a lad anyway, so now that I'm not quite such a lad, I still continue supporting them. People we've talked to throughout the club and supporters have almost said that you're too good to be true. Did, did that come naturally to you? Uh, uh, I mean, Billy Bonds and, and different lads have said they're going to blow the truth on me now and again. <laughs> they said I mean, your wife in the kids. <laughs> that's right. I mean, um, it's, it's not, I think all I try and be is, is myself. I'm probably lucky that I'm, I have got a, a sort of placid temperament, so to speak, and it uh, takes a lot for me to get riled on the field, so I've never got involved with referees or whatever. The lads have also been saying that sometimes in training, they'll try and make you rise to the occasion a little bit, might be a little tap on the ankles, but you always make them look stupid. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, usually I can always remember when, when Bill, Billy Bonds uh, was sort of in midfield, he had quite a few seasons in midfield before he went into the back four. And uh, not so much in training, but certainly in matches on a Saturday, if, if anyone started kicking me, I used to have a word with Bill, look, Bill is sorting me out today, do you think you can deal with him? And Bill was my protector. And so uh, in training as well, I think uh, if anyone's sort of try, trying to sort me out, I always look for Bill to look after me. As we mentioned earlier, we've been all around the place trying to get some dirt on you and <laughs> can't find any. I just wonder, over the 20 years, everything looks so rosy. It doesn't look like you've made one single mistake in your career all the way through. Have you? Uh, oh, yes, you, you have your, your little spells. I mean, every season you have your quiet spell. There's no way 42 league games that you're going to have um, a good uh, run throughout that entire season. I mean, you're going to have times where things you're trying aren't coming off. And I think, you know, that's the difference between, shall we say, success and failure. I mean, in 1971-72, I mean, I was on the transfer list um, and I was 21-22. And, I mean, that, at that age, most players should be established in their first team. And, and, you know, so there was a thin line, to a certain extent, between success and failure. But otherwise, no regrets? No, I, I mean, you know, people say you could have changed clubs and gone abroad or done this and that. But I can honestly say I wouldn't have changed anything. You know, I'm very pleased to have been in Town. Trevor's laugh. Brooking again. Really in the mood. Oh, and that's a delightful ball if Wolfram could get there. Left foot in a good one and Pike and scores. 1 0. Brooking. Swindlehurst and Potty are up as well. That's the ball for Potty. Inch perfect. A brilliant goal. Shaking off Potty. By Allen. Oh, lovely play by Allen. Brilliant skills. Burke with the corner. And 
it's into the back of the nets, and I think Clive Allen will claim that one as well. Well, a terrific fight back by the Rangers there, and wasn't that a super goal there by uh, Clive Allen? But what really impressed me, Jimmy, was the form of Trevor Brooking. It, last weekend when I watched it at home, you know, it really had me sitting up in my seat. I thought it was a vintage Brooking performance. I mean, everything he did in the game was terrific. You know, it was as if he'd rolled away the years. Yeah, the old chap did do well, didn't he? Oh, it was super. He set up chances, Jimmy, clear-cut chances. And when you think of England playing the other night, you know, there was nobody really you could say, well, had this touch of skill, this touch of class. Well, you see, what he does, Ian, and what he was doing here is he was slowing the game down, wasn't he? And he was steady on the ball and he was looking around him and being aware of what was going on. I mean, they're, they're super passes, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, really, they, they, are, out, they are absolutely superb. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's Trevor at his best. Yeah, I mean, do we have another Trevor Brooking? Not at the moment, do we?